thanks for doing this. Uh, the, the Boeing MSA flew in today and uh, it's going to be on its way to Seattle. But can you tell me a little bit about the aircraft? Yes, the, uh, the MSA is a Challenger 604 aircraft that we took out of our VIP fleet. And uh, what we wanted to do is put together a demonstration aircraft on a capability we see a relatively large market for over the next 10 years, maybe $10 billion in the mid-size ISR platform market over 10 years. So we took that out. We said we wanted to put a demonstration aircraft together to show, eliminate some of the risk for any potential customers. So we would take it. Uh, the nice thing is it was a, a Canadian platform, Bombardier. Uh, the aircraft was modified to accommodate the, uh, the, the ray domes and any other structural mod by Field Aviation north of Toronto. So a lot of Canadian content. And uh, then we did the sensor integration in Seattle. And uh, it's been, it, took a t it was a two-year effort from uh, starting with the, we'll call it green aircraft, to where it is now. So uh, pretty impressive feat over two years. So now the, uh, the customer doesn't have to worry about any risk for, or costs associated with integration. Now there's sensors that are integrated on the platform now, the automatic identification system, the ESA radar, the electric optical infrared uh, sensor, as well as the uh, communication intelligence, as well as uh, the last piece is the, uh, 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 the electric, electronic support measures. Now all those are currently, certain designs, but the nice thing about this system, which is based off the P8 mission systems, is you can, uh, depending on the customer requirements, swap in and out. So if you wanted to have, if there was a Canadian sensor, for example, that uh, uh, wanted, wanted to integrate on there, we could, we could do that. We have the expertise as part of this demonstration aircraft. So it was really just a, it was a mis misrenegation for the midsize ISR market, which we think is relatively large over the next 10 years. Okay, um, so it's got a lot of new tech. And that's, um, that's good. Canada's currently flying the CP-140, and that's supposed to be in service to between 2025, 2030. How does this aircraft fit in? Well, uh, very good question, and it, we get asked that a lot. You know, the, the MSA aircraft for Boeing is not a replacement for the CP. We would not advertise that as a replacement for the CP-140 in Canada. We understand that those modified CP-140s, as you mentioned, are going to be flying out to the 2030-ish time fairing. And the capability that they have on there is being demonstrated in the Middle East right now. Uh, a very capable platform. But there's a high demand on it. What we would advertise the MSA as is a complement to that capability. So offload some of the demand. Since the it's a mid-size ISR platform. You know, the P-8 is mostly an anti-submarine warfare ISR platform, so it doesn't have the weapons capability. It can't track subs. It can't prosecute subs. So we would see a, an aircraft like MSA maybe doing more of the overland uh, uh, type ISR requirements, especially up north, which we know is a very vast territory, and there's a lot of interest in maintaining uh, situational awareness in that country. Can you get into the specific type of missions this aircraft would be doing? Well, uh, other nice thing about the platform, it's multi-role. Uh, primary mission would be uh, uh, ISR, intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance with the sensor packages that I mentioned earlier. However, uh, it can be quickly modified to a, a VIP transport. Uh, you know, Canada has four Challenger aircraft in their fleet. I believe they're 601s and 604s uh, that do that mission now. It could be used for medevac. It can actually be used for search and rescue as well. Uh, which other countries uh, have done. And, uh, uh, and quick transport in and out of theater of doesn't necessarily have to be very important people. It can be uh, uh, people that just need to be on the scene to maybe evaluate uh, uh, a situation at hand. For example, if there's an earthquake in Nepal and you want to get a crew in there quickly to size up the situation before uh, more assets arrive, you could send them in on a Challenger. And which, is, which is nice because it's a lease, uh, it, it's a less costly aircraft to operate just due to its size. And of course, uh, newer the aircraft, the lower the cost per flight hour. All right, let's go back to the, the Canadian connection. Uh, Bombardier is a, a Canadian company. The Challenger is a Canadian jet. Why did you choose the Challenger? Well, we did an extensive market assessment in that mid-range uh, commercial aircraft uh, just to see what would best fit uh, the uh, capabilities we wanted to include on that platform. And the Challenger uh, 60. Five, which I believe Bombardier now is calling the 650 aircraft, was the best choice. And the reasons for that was its speed, its range, its endurance, its capability for growth. Because, you know, as you know, the technology is always evolving and we want to have the room to grow, not only from a, a space, a cooling, elect uh, electronic uh, standpoint. Uh, so when it's ready to incorporate, it has the room to. So 
all those went into the decision making process and the, the cost to operate was very competitive as well as the cost to acquire and or modify if you already have got those aircraft in your inventory. And you partnered with uh, Field Aviation to customize the aircraft for this role. Can you tell me a little bit about that company and why you chose them? Well, uh, Field Aviation uh, has a great level of experience modifying these type of aircraft. Uh, so we did a, you know, we did a market assessment for the platform. We also went out there and said what companies would best uh, be able to modify uh, the platform, a green aircraft, as I mentioned earlier, to accommodate these sensors. Field Aviation uh, was by far the best choice based on their experience, their quality. You know, we have experience working with uh, them on the, our Apache program, so we have a history with them, and uh, they've done some great work for other uh, uh, customers as well. So based on all that, uh, they were a logical choice. You know, up here in Canada, it's important to have uh, Canadian content. Uh, that's really just that's a side benefit for any potential work we may do up here with a, a Canadian customer. But uh, uh, you know, we just we don't put work somewhere just because we're a nice company. We do it because of the, the quality of work, uh, their commitment to schedule and uh, to maintain cost. So this also translates into Canadian jobs down the line. If if you have sales of this aircraft, not only in Canada but but around the world, is that correct? That is that is correct. Uh, the, the amount of Canadian content, we would have to do a, a, an analysis on how many more jobs there could be. And that's something that we uh, as a company are very interested in because that's important for anything that's done here in Canada. And we know how important export of uh, Canadian content is uh, to uh, Industry Canada and their new value proposition as part of the defense procurement strategy. So that's very important to us and that's, uh, uh, we know that uh, field aviation would, would step up to the challenge if uh, we, were, we were able to acquire some of that. $10 billion market that, uh, that I mentioned over the next 10 years. You may have mentioned this, but uh, the Challenger is a business jet. That's what it's predominantly used for. Does it, is it being actively used in any military applications right now? There are other countries around the world uh, that do this, uh, do something similar uh, to what we're proposing with the, the uh, MSA aircraft, and, and Denmark is, is one example that uses a Challenger for the missions that I mentioned earlier. You know, the, uh, the ISR, overland, overwater for Denmark, as well as the uh, VIP transport. Uh, it's a very quick transition between one or the other, taking out the consoles for the ISR mission to uh, accommodate the VIPs and the, the comfortable seating that would be required to transport those, as well as uh, uh, the SAR. Uh, Field Aviation has actually put a door, uh, they use the door out back to dispense a uh, search and rescue kit onto a, a situation. To uh, They can't uh, deploy SAR techs, for example, but they can get a kit down to a person that's stranded and then send in uh, techs at a later time. So th those are the missions that, that they use it for. So it's, it's a concept that's being utilized around the world today and that uh, we're trying to capitalize on that with this uh, maritime surveillance aircraft. I'm Jason from Vanguard and, and this is Jim. Jim, thank you very much for your time. We really appreciate it. It was my pleasure.